Hello, my name is Chen Hao from Durham University. Today, I'm presenting our work, Fine Grain Key Idea Extraction and Clustering of Online Course Reviews. A high level, um, this work presents a framework and pipeline of a course review key idea extractor based on fine grained linguistic units. It overcomes the heavy reliance on statistical characteristics, uh, which traditional topic modeling methods like LDA are strongly based on. And it overcomes the course granularity of other state of the art topic modeling approaches, such as top to back. Um, so, why is this important? Online course reviews have been an essential way for course providers to get insights into uh, students' perception about the course quality and the structure. And they provide um, important perception about how to improve the course. Um, but um, course pro providers face the problem of um, the corpus of online course reviews are typically very large. They typically have to sift through tens of thousands of comments, uh, which in the process, uh, might incur non-coverage of ideas in reading due to limited working memory or ideas being ignored throughout a reading uh, due to confirmation bias and um, probably tunnel vision of the course providers. The research gap in this area um, is that the existing research mostly study keyword instruction and topic modeling uh, with, with the former con concerning reducing the size of each document while the latter um, face the problem of course granularity in the topic identification. So why these um, two lines of approaches do not work well for this problem though? For, uh, we give two concrete um, examples of um, the, 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 this issue. So for example, when it comes to keyword extraction, if we had 10K reviews with an average length of 200 words, keyword extraction concerns reducing the size from 10K times 200 to say 10K to 10, while a reader still has to go through the whole 10K document, the whole corpus to, to figure out um, what, what they are talking about, uh, which they will uh, still face a problem that we're trying to address in, uh, in, our, in our work. When it comes to topic modeling, if a document talks about multiple topics, um, as we're currently using se semantic embedding, in solving relevant uh, problems. The, the embedding space get twisted and average. Say, if a document talks about course quality, the programming language it, it uses, and probably quizzes, um, you know, gamification, there are different aspects and it, it twists the embedding of the whole document. And so that when it comes to clustering or classification, the embedding won't successfully or um, won't work very well when it comes to represented the aspect level information that these documents are talking about. Um, uh, traditional topic mark modeling works very well when one tries to distinguish um, across different topics, say dis distinguishing course reviews from say funny stories or say news or you know other content, but it doesn't work well in identifying aspects wide information. So the pipeline we're proposing here is um, to first break each document down into fine-grained linguistic units, and then encode them uh, using the state-of-the-art language model encoder, um, and then go through the state-of-the-art dimensionality reduction and hierarchy of clustering. And then we compute a sentence centroid to represent each cluster so that the course providers or the lecturers we only need to attend to most important aspects um, through reading a few representative phrases for the top and largest clusters. That way, course providers get to attend to important aspects with high coverage and efficiency. To do experiment, we leverage a course Coursera dataset, um, and then we sample 12 machine learning and data science related courses to do experiments on. Um, right now, um, we want to go into each step in detail. Um, so what makes our approach, is, uh, our approach different is the pre-processing step. Um, but another issue we are concerned is that we don't want to make the whole pipeline too um, heavy, heavyweight. 
So we don't want to um, incorporate deep learning facilitated facilitated um, dependency parsing to break different uh, document into more fine grained units. So we use a traditional method based on intuition that served in a very old method rate, which stands for rapid automatic query extraction. So the int intuition is that we first break each document down into fine grained linguistic unit, um, either using the limiters or further break them down using customized solvers. For example, um, taking the second paragraph right here, this document, if this is a document, it will be broken down into um, the first short sentence is break each document down into fine grained linguistic units. And the second short sentence will be either using delimiters and a third short sentence will be or further break them down using customized softwares. And when we get three, now we get three short sentences, we, we want to further break them down uh, using customized softwares. For example, if um, down is a stop word, which is probably not. Um, the last sentence will be broken down into further break up and using customized softwares, right? So we delete as many as the, um, you know, informative softwares from the list to prevent them from being deleted um, so that we, we get more information preserved in the later clustering. But what we find is that the most important part is to break document into short sentences and the uh, customized software the further break them down into linguistic units are less important because a short sentence is already fine grained enough, even though some short sentences, short sentences talk about um, two aspects, um, even though it's really rare, but um, it is still, it, it still less than the effects of twisting the embedding. And the stop words are also less important because if, um, a, a short sentence is break, break, broken down into two long phrases. If information is not present, uh, presented in one phrase, phrase, it will be presented in the adjacent one anyway, preserving the information to be encoded uh, for the later clustering. So after the pre-processing step, um, the pipeline further go through a triplet. Um, namely the encoding, the mention as reduction, and clustering. For encoding, we leverage a um, state-of-the-art um, framework um, sentence transformers. Um, you know, even though transformers models are dominating right now, a pain point that they're facing is that the uh, vanilla embedding store in these models or the classification token or the CLS token which uh, research will typically use to represent a whole document doesn't really accurately reflect their semantic um, position in a semantic space because of the absence of this training object, objective in the training process. And what trend, uh, sentence transformers do is that it take these pre-trained language model and fine tune on similarity pairs um, so that you know, um, the, the model uh, is fine-tuned to learn to position the, 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 the language into the semantic space accurately. And this one we're using here is called MPNet uh, or MPNet based version two, which is based on MPNet as a backbone and fine-tuned on over 1 billion similar similarity pairs based on a state-of-the-art contractive loss, uh, which is by putting uh, texts that are, that are similar together into uh, more, more closer space, while negative sample uh, will be pushed further in a semantic space. For dimensionality reduction, we leverage UMAP, uh, which preserve better global structure compared to you know, other popular uh, dimensionality reduction approach, such as TSNI and older one like PCA. So um, UMAP project higher dimension uh, cluster into a lower space um, and preserving better global structure, meaning that um, the cluster that are far away from each other in the high, cement, high cemented space will be preserved the similar distance in lower dimensional space. For clustering, you, we leverage HDB scan, which is a um, density based approach. And it is um, uh, taken to the next level by 
you know, incorporating hierarchical, making it not sens sensitive to hyperparameters compares vanilla version um, DB scan, which is very sensitive to hyperparameters and um, strongly uh, rely on exhaustive experiments on to find the best hyperparameters. Also, it, it um, relies on fewer non-realistic assumptions compared to the de facto or the go-to k-means where uh, which researchers of uh, relevant studies uh, will, 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 will go to, will tend to go to. Um, so k-mean assumes that um, the spherical uh, shape of the, uh, the, of the cluster and inclusion of all instances, which is not true because some instance uh, by their nature, probably like are not supposed to belong to any cluster and should be um, identified as outlier. So after we do the cluster, we need to uh, compute a central phrase to represent each cluster. Uh, what we do here is the CP right here, the central phrase, we compute um, each of the phrase in each cluster, the EK with the central uh, central embedding CE and take the R mass of the, the highest cosine similarity to represent the whole cluster. And the CE is a weighted mean of all the embedding of the phrases um, in the cluster EK. And we weight it by, um, you know, giving less weight when the outlier score is higher. And we also put, um, alpha as a, uh, a coefficient to uh, give the outlier score more or less weight. When alpha is super high, uh, we can see, you know, the, the um, CE is given very late, uh, very um, little, little weight to the, um, uh, these embeddings. This is a result um, of the 12 machine learning and deep, um, Data, data science related course, um, you know, at the, the course level. We, we can see that we present two results here, uh, respectively the 5D clustering and 10D clustering. We can see that they yell rather robust and stable output uh, because of the reason we'll explain later. We can see that um, what they're talking about um, are very similar, say the larger cluster, um, for 5D clustering talks about the sense and purpose of algorithms as the central, weighted centroid. So the whole cluster is talking about algorithm. Um, well, the weighted centroid for 10, 10D clustering for the larger cluster is the guts of the algorithm. And other clusters are pretty similar. So this one is talking about OTIF, the, the instructor uses OTIF, and this one is talking about be afraid of, be afraid of using OTIF. Um, and smaller clusters are the same. Um, for example, this one talk about math background. For 10D cluster, the central uh, phrase is computed as being proficient with some certain aspect of, of math, while uh, 5D clustering talk, talks about uh, a statistic background um, is needed and probably is ignored. So pretty much similar aspects. And now we want to take a closer look at how elements in one cluster look like. For example, we take the third largest cluster in under 10D clustering. I believe this yields around 100 elements in the cluster and we sample 10. We can see that the, the, the one with zero outlier scores are probably the, the center of, of the, the cluster, even though cen center does not exist for um, hierarchical clustering. Um, but they are pretty much very negative about OTIF. Say this one talks about do not like OTIF, and this one saying that it's using OTIF instead of more modern languages for students, for students to use OTIF, be afraid of using it. While when, when the outlier score gets larger, somebody is talking about, I enjoy learning OTIF and awesome, awesome assignment submission tool by OTIF. So we can see that both negative sentiment and positive sentiments are expressed in 
this cluster while they're still clustering to the same one because they're talking about the same aspects. This is um, which we hypothesizes because the um, pre-trained encoder is already learned to give more weight to the, you know, uh, by give, giving more attention to the, the objects that the sentences are talking about. And also we find our pipeline is extremely powerful in, in, in terms of it's being wording agnostic. Um, taking the seven largest clustering on the 10D clustering as a sample, um, the, the central phrase is computed as very well constructed. While in this cluster, almost no verbatim forms of the same words, you know, are presented. Um, they, they can be saying thoughtfully made, very well put together, carefully created, very well constructed. And they can also be, be talking about Aslan self-contained, which is a uh, weird expression, right? Meticulously curated. And we can also see that both positive and, and negative sentiments are expressed here, but they're still identified as the same aspect level, uh, similar cluster. We also conduct um, a uh, Blation study on dimensionality reduction, which we find that dimensions implicitly encode the demand for gran granularity and tolerance towards wording differences. In this example, we can see that under 10D clustering, these very, um, you know, no verbatim forms are, are, are here, but they are still, you know, the algorithm is still toler have high tolerance to it, which is because the dimensions are already reduced to very low. And we can see that if we um, directly apply clustering on the vanilla 768 dimensions, a few, only a few expression we will put even in the largest cluster because they are very less tolerant, tolerant to wording differences. In general, lower dimension, less fine grain and more wording agnostic. And since our goal is to be inclusive to the most expressed idea in, 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 instead of um, say, be very strict about their expression, we want, um, we, we want to select the best hyperparameter in terms of, you know, including more expression, right? And this is in line with our evaluation metric um, student coverage, um, assuming we should attend to most expressed idea first and then go to the underrepresented idea. It's probably using, go to the outlier of the uh, cluster and stuff. So the results is 10D and 20, 20D gives the best result for aspect wise course level analysis, which we suggest future researchers to uh, start from. And we also pro uh, propose a few um, lines of future work. First of all, future research can um, create goal center summaries of lecturer, and course providers of real life courses to validate the results our pipeline gives and the perception of real life uh, lecturers. And the second, the second um, direction we propose is to identify and mitigate algorithm and gender bias. A um, uh, question I want to ask here is: Do non-native speakers' wording get ignored more? Probably. Um, from my hypothesis, um, they'll probably be put into as the more outlier position of the, the cluster and tend, tend to be normal. And the third direction is, um, do vanilla encoder work well with highly domain specific wording? In our case, we use machine learning and data science courses uh, where the expression are probably not highly different from day-to-day -day writing and conversation. Highly domain specific wording in highly specialized courses like medicine related courses uh, probably needs more accurate understanding from the model to project them into semantic space. Um, what, what I'm suggesting here is uh, use a set of our unsupervised constructive fine tuning to, to further fine tune the model um, to, to, to um, enable it to attain deeper understanding of these domain specific wording or, or worse. And the last direction is um, to personalize cluster recommendation. Uh, when our when deployed in real life setting, 
um, when the course, course providers um, use our uh, pipeline, we suggest uh, to enable them to accept, um, reject, and merge the clusters. And we can take you know, the central embedding of each cluster as feature. And we learn a feature-based activation layer to uh, using some uh, simple classification model, probably that logic, logic regression, to learn their behavior of accepting, um, you know, rejecting and merging the clusters to provide them with more personalized cluster recommendation. Thank you.